All right, so we covered on a prior episode a one-on-one match between either you and Monica or you and Caitlin. <laughs> we need we need the complete scouting report, the rundown. What what is the move there? What what's going on? Who's okay. winning that match? I took oh. Coach J against Caitlin. Very I'm smart. Still deciding Patrick. where I want to go with you versus Monica, but you go. Okay, well, definitely against Caitlin. Yeah. Because I get in her head. Oh, I would own her, <laughs> own her. She'd be so you know John and want to just to be talking all the time. Yep. And then she'd be a little off. Yeah. And then I would just back her down in my little area of the post and my up and unders. You got her. And then I'd get her. Yeah. And just because I, and she knows, deep down, she knows. Absolutely, she knows. She I knows. Yeah. Now, Monica, she got a little size on me. Yeah. So I would really, I'd have to play behind her and I have to really push her off that, that block. But you also know that I know her, you know, the teensy beansy weaknesses that she has, which I should not reveal on this show. Absolutely not. But I would, probably attack those because I'm competitive. Yeah. And so that would probably go down to the wire, but then I would beat her on a fadeaway from about seven feet. Yeah. So Coach Jay undefeated against both. Undefeated 2-0. Yeah. There you have Got it. Got it. There you have it. And since I'm on the podcast last, I mean, how, how could I say anything different? Yeah, exactly. well, maybe now we need to have Head them on yourself, back baby. on. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We need a rebuttal now at some point, too. Yeah, so. they're probably, oh, they hear this, they'll, they're going to really. Yeah. And we, we we'll also know. know that I'm probably, um, you know, the better I was as I get older. Now, back in the day, you know, I think all what I've said, it could be true. Now, with my slightly older, you know, build, maybe the games I've been would a probably just bit, be closer. Maybe I've embellished my abilities, maybe slightly. So mm-hmm. maybe, may, I mean, I could get tripped up by Caitlin. I mean, I guess she's okay, but... I got you the whole way. I think so, too, because my mind right here. Exactly. You can get it in her head. Yo, Kono with the rebound. They got eight seconds to go. Move the ball right up the court. Yeah, you know they ready to roll. Hit the outlet pass to Patrick. Put a move on them so tragic. Yeah, you don't want no static. McCaffrey boys, they be like magic. Get shit back to Connor. Yeah, you know these boys is hooping. Hit him with the alley. Yeah, you know he straight up hooped it. Now Patrick's hanging on the rim. Yeah, he's got his feet up. Excessive celebration. McCaffrey boys, they done got teed up. Oh, man, they got teed up. Want to upgrade your sports drink? Choose Body Armor, the number one natural sports drink for athletes. Body Armor combines coconut water with potassium-packed electrolytes and vitamins to provide superior hydration. Ditch artificial and come on board to natural flavors and sweeteners. It's more than a sports drink. It's a lifestyle. Proudly sponsored by Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Are you looking for a unique educational experience or a distinctive marketing piece? How about your very own barrel of whiskey? Iowa-based Foundry Distilling Company is the industry leader in producing custom whiskey at their site, myprivatebarrel.com. Foundry has worked with individuals, businesses, groups of friends, social clubs, bars, and restaurants, and charitable organizations to produce custom labeled spirits for marketing purposes, fundraising, celebrating milestones, or just for fun. Check out myprivatebarrel.com to get started. Enjoy a memorable experience, receive a great whiskey education, and create a custom labeled spirit that celebrates you, your business, or whatever you feel like toasting to. Get started at myprivatebarrel.com. That's myprivatebarrel.com. Cheers and go Hawks. Welcome, everybody, to episode 18. Yeah! Teed up, up with uh, <laughs> Patrick and I, very special guest with us this week. Um, Coach Jay, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. I was honored when I got the, got the text. <laughs> I mean, your show, I mean, this is gonna, this is going to launch me. Right now, I feel it. It's going to launch me. This show, I mean, I I hope I can coach next year. When they hear us combination, Yeah. hey, you never know. As if you already weren't on the map enough, right? (laughs) Exactly. Because if everybody didn't already know the legend of... Right. (laughs) If my mother was still alive, she would agree with you. She would agree. Yeah, she would be totally. I was kind of her universe. But other than that, that's a little, little bit of a stretch, Connor. (laughs) <laughs> well, you said you said when we were walking in, you said this is the beauty of NIL, right? Ah, like, this is what it's supposed to this be. This is what it's supposed to be. Right? Yeah. This is great. And you're these guys, Stella, all these guys producing this. I mean, awesome. Yeah. And this is what's fun. It gives you, uh, utilize your strengths. You have some fun. It's productive for our fans. And it's, 
it's this is what's right about nil. There's a lot that isn't, but yeah. this this is awesome. So you I'm, could do I'm a pumped. whole like four hour pod about what's wrong. With oh NIL. man, <laughs> exactly. Maybe we could ask Nick Saban. Yeah. he seems oh, to know. Geez. We can invite him to come. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I watched no, the uh, the Jimbo Fisher's response oh, live. Man. I like watched it. They like Texas A&M like streamed it. So I went on Twitter and I I, I watched it live. Oh, it was that's, awesome. That's like reality TV at its finest. I exactly. mean, it's playing out in front of our eyes. Exactly. And especially when Jimbo is family, right? Mm -hmm. It's exactly. like, that's a whole nother level. It's yeah. like, woo. They were super tight. And Jimbo Fisher was not. I didn't realize they were that tight. Yeah. No, they were really? boys. Yeah, really. they were. And then they're not. Not any so. longer. But it's, there's a lot. There's a lot with the. All of it, and but there's just not a lot of rules, right? So yeah. there no is, rules, you there say. isn't, yeah. And then to, <laughs> for him to kind of stir it up, I mean, it's interesting to say the least. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. There's loopholes with everything too. Oh, totally. Even if there is a rule, there's going to be a loophole. Oh, totally. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's not a not a fun time, to, I think, to really regulate it. Right. And then try to figure it out when you're the what I'd like to consider like we're the good guys trying to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. But when you see a lot of what's happening, it's just, it's, it seems a little muddy at mm -hmm. the, at the very least. And it'll be interesting to see how everybody navigates it moving yeah. forward. Yeah, no, I yeah. agree. And but I this is what's good. Your show is a great, great part of the NIL. Oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah. been awesome. I've been trying to get, I've been talking to Caitlin about like a pod and like yeah. seeing if she would like start up one on her own. And that would be like six hours long. Um, where, yeah. No, she would just go. <laughs> right. She would just. Right. She would have just, to use the bleep button a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be, that might be true. That might be true. <laughs> That's the goal. Um, but she, I mean, cause let's, let's stay on this NIL topic just yeah. a little bit. You know, you have somebody, obviously mm -hmm. she has taken great advantage of NIL opportunities in every way. And that's <laughs> kind of, it's gone on across the women's mm -hmm. game. Like there have been a lot of, it really athletes. has. There's been a lot of athletes who have made a ton of money. Paige, obviously, yeah. Caitlin, right. you know, TikTok stars, Haley, Van Vliet. Right. Like there's girls everywhere who yeah. have really benefited from it. And I just feel like that speaks to the growth of the game and like Absolutely. how much it's taking off. Yeah. Um, we've talked about that before, but I guess your take on, you know, the direction and how much NIL is kind of influencing. Mm -hmm. the, the the girls the girls yeah. game, the women's game and how how people like Caitlin and people like Paige and yeah. Haley are are bringing it to the to the next level. Yeah, I I think it's a, a just a great indicator that there is interest in mm -hmm. women's sports yeah. and there's truly uh, support for it. And I think in with anything though, you have to have a little bit of a personality. I right. mean, even with you guys, right? Like you you make it fun because of your personality. <laughs> yeah. Your brothers, but you have a uh, confidence and you can make a really good show. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can't just give anybody a podcast. Right. Yeah. And right. I think that's the same with women, but people are finding out like, Hey, if it's the right athlete, the right female athlete, wow, this, this can be a whole different reach that we never yeah. thought of. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of young ballers that men or boys and girls that, you know, think it's pretty cool that Caitlin shoots from the logo. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. that doesn't hurt her brand, right? Mm -hmm. But the way she plays, the fun she has, the the swag she has, that helps sells to boys and girls. Absolutely. And I think... Um, marketers are figuring that out the tiktok kids mm -hmm. right is like man the tiktok that's a whole massive audience mm -hmm. and i think that is really showing hopefully um you know businesses that they don't just have to focus on you know big time football or big time men's basketball and put all your resources there that hey we can kind of find a little niche over here right. and that niche then becomes wow that's a pretty big market mm -hmm. So I think that's the positive. And for us as a program, it's pretty cool to have um, arguably one of the most marketable oh, women absolutely. for the NIL deals. So we can kind of learn and grow with her. Mm -hmm. And then we have that experience of which to recruit to. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I haven't talked to your, your dad or your men's staff, but I mean, the recruits that have come in the last year, the first question I'd say at least 75% of the time, I'm not talking a question. The first one, usually from um, the dad or the male guardian, how much do you think she can make? Interesting. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. 
Absolutely. Wow. The the really good, the more like the top ones in like a right. hoop girls ranking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of shocked me. It's not so much about, are you going to take care of my kid? Yeah. It's not even about, is she going to start? It's really maybe 75% of the time is, is high. Maybe it's not the first question. 75% of the time, for sure, it's come up. But I've been shocked how many times it's one of the first questions. That is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very thankful we have Caitlin. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> this is our first, but she's doing quite well, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but well, I, yeah. I think there's a little bit of a... Um, you know, growing pains because everybody's looking at it and everybody's, oh, I want to get a piece of that pie or whatever. But I think it's going to settle. Mm -hmm. I mean, because how many times can athletic directors or, you know, we have, we're paid for play now. We're also, um, you want to tell your boosters, hey, we got to keep getting these great guys, you know, make sure that we have collectives now. Oh, by the way, keep funding our scholarships. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, we want a a renovation. Right. I mean, how many times, I mean, how much are they going to be able to keep, you know, coughing up an extra hundred thousand or whatever the case may be. So I think it's going to be really every which way until it isn't, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's going to be interesting times for all of us to figure out. Mm-hmm. I mean, for sure, from big time football all the way down. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was talking to a mid major assistant, like this was a couple weeks ago, and he said the same thing that you mm-hmm. just said that like every recruit that he talks to is like, hey, like, what can you do for me? And yeah. he's like, dude, we have no money. Right. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, no money I to know. go around. He's like, it's what, like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah. I don't, like, we don't make any money. Right. So, yeah. so it's just like, there's there's not a lot of money in the pro. And I was just like, that's like unbelievable that yeah. like, whoever he's recruiting is like, if that's what he's getting yeah. asked every time he calls a kid. Well, it's, and it's, it's like, weird. Okay, so let's say he lands that kid, mm-hmm. right? And the kid's like, doesn't have a lot of big looks right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he likes the authenticity of that coach, right? right. He kind of likes the the vibe. He goes and he's really good, mm-hmm. right? Well, now that coach really was probably a feeder program. Yeah. Because he, they were great and now yeah. someone's going to say, "Hey, look at my NIL." You know, at a Big 10 school, Big 12 school, and they're gone. Mm-hmm. So, I think the whole way of coaching and recruiting between the portal and NILs and what people can offer. And I mean, everybody's human, right? Mm-hmm. Like I just had a conversation with someone today that said, well, I mean, I mean, the virtues if a kid comes and he really wants to play for that school and, you know, doesn't that trumpet? I said, no, <laughs> if someone Not like the, if someone's handlers somehow after the year and they find they can make 250 on an NII deal, Mm-hmm. And there's a need, right? They've had a great year at a mid-major conference. I mean, they're human. I mean, yeah. it's the same way like Keegan's going to go. He loves Iowa. He's a hawk, right? But yeah. I mean, you're not going to say no yeah. to being a first-round draft pick. Yeah. It's the it's just the same way. The whole landscape is is changed. Mm-hmm. And I think for the mid-major coaches like that, I mean. I applaud him for saying, no, dude, we don't make that. I mean, you're going to come and we're going to have fun this year, but I think you kind of have to sell this year. Exactly. Because if they really do blossom, they're going to be gone. Exactly. And like that was already kind of happening before NIL. Right. Like you train, like it's like you have a good year at a mid major. Everybody who had a good year at a mid major, oh, I'll just transfer right. And like, it really wasn't working very well for a lot of them. Right. Like I remember uh, Jeff Goodman wrote this long article, basically like, you know about the ones that like really succeed or whatever. Right. But then there's the ones that like, like transfer up, play eight minutes, average really two points, right. Shoot 20%, make like four baskets. Like it's yes. just like, so it's like, is that is the grass really always greener? No, probably not. But right. now it's like, so they were already doing that anyway, just for the opportunity to play big time college basketball. But then now it's like, you have to, if, right? If you can get yeah. a crazy nil Absolutely. deal, like you like you'd be what it's insane the, not to. What were the numbers that you read last night about the guys who are still in the port? Like the num- wasn't it like I don't remember off the top of my head, but, but it was like, something crazy of guys who went in the portal and now are still yeah, in like the portal. Fifty percent like of the people who go. went in the portal like wow. still are in really? there, like with like with nothing. Yeah. So, I mean, some of them probably are still deciding yeah. between certain looks or whatever, but like, yeah, I mean, not 50% right. are still deciding. Right. Probably yeah. like I would right. say 15% out of that 50 is still like working. But like I would yeah. say a lot of guys go in there and like you have no film. Right. You have no like, like, like if you like, let's say you redshirted or right. 
I don't know, just didn't play very much. Right. It's like you, you, no film, no stats, like right. No, nothing. Like where are you supposed to go? Yeah. That's a, that's a risk. Leave a pretty good situation in that because mm-hmm. there's a lot of guys a lot, and the girls are a lot of the same, a lot of yeah. young women that are went in there, but now they're finding the waters are a little rough. Yeah. But again, I think it'll, I, I think the COVID stuff made it weird too. 100%. It's like, People got crunched because we have the COVID years and then high school kids kind of took it mm-hmm. and then they weren't really happy. Now they're a freshman and they should have either gone up or gone down. I'm better. I want to play. And it's just, I think until we get through the COVID that extra year, I think that's when it'll kind of start to settle. Mm-hmm. I just think it everything is so topsy-turvy. And I actually never agreed with the COVID year. I love it that I get Monica Sonano back. <laughs> and if, if Caitlin wants to stay, the positives of yeah, it. But right. I just thought it was so weird because that year, most of us, except the Ivies, we played a, way, a very large percentage of the games. Yeah, And then it's kind of like, oh, you put that extra crunch on an athletic department to pay for those years. Right. Uh, but then you, you kind of, as a coach, you have to make these weird decisions like – okay, we only have two that can stay, two got to go. Mm-hmm, you right. you kind of turn into a little farm team, yeah, right? right? A little D-league team. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's all business. When those of us who have stayed in college coaching, it's more It's more than that. It's not you want to win, we're paid to win, obviously, but we really still develop everybody on the bench mm-hmm. from the star to the role player. And it. I think it really devalues um, trying to develop kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love we have the grad transfer and so forth, but I, it's, it's weird to me. Mm-hmm. Like when you see, like, I'm glad for like Tommy Taiwo. I love Tommy. But when they announce they're going to do their grad transfer and they have the TCU uniform on, I'm like, ah. Yeah. But I'm happy right. for yeah. right? But that's what we are. And I'm yeah. very happy she, you know, her and Logan, our player, Logan's going to Providence and they get that year paid for. Great. But it's so weird what we've, done with this profession right. yeah. is like you go you graduate you're a hawk for life baby you got your degree and now you're a hawk for life but i also am going to be partly tcu you mm-hmm. know partly wherever we go exactly and that's some ways a good thing but it, it just seems weird mm-hmm. you know i'm glad that, i'm glad that wasn't me yeah. i'm glad like i had my years done it was at drake university drake bulldogs go I just think it would have been a weird thing to go through the recruiting process over, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. to go to a, get one year for a two year masters. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And, I mean, you guys, you've always been more of a developmental yeah. program, like you said. And so, and so have we, like, yeah. you know, I think my dad is kind of struggling a little bit with like the landscape of it as a ton of other coaches, yeah. are, like understanding what's happening and like Absolutely. the direction because you know, he's, he's always been like a very like loyal coach, like to his guys, Absolutely. Like he's going to stick with like his yeah. guys that he's had and it's, and it's changed. And that's why like, and it bothers him even more now. Like when somebody, like if somebody leaves right. like, for right. no reason, yep. like that bothers him. Yeah, it and does. It bothers Be- us too. And I'm sure it would, and it would bother you yeah. the same well, I as think, a coaching staff. I think sometimes people don't realize that like a Fran McCaffrey or Lisa Bluter at the end of a win mm-hmm. night when you just kind of like every, you know, the stars are celebrating, but you, you feel bad for the kid that doesn't get in Mm -hmm. because they're working their tail off. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but they're, they're just, they're not in that rotation, but Mm -hmm. you, you worry about that because you know that that kid, you know, made Connor really good every day. Right. Mm -hmm. Or he's, he's really pushing Patrick and you just, you just can't get him in, Mm -hmm. but you're, you're working as a coach to make sure they feel valued and so forth. But with everything that's out there now, I mean, it's hard to like to make them feel that valued because there's always this carrot like, uh, you know, right. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like you, coach, but you know that if I go there, I'm gonna play, and you know, I, it just it just muddies the waters, you mm-hmm. know. And but I, again, I think it'll settle and everybody will know the score. But it does uh, when you as a coach when you commit, you know, hey, we want you to come, and they come into your fold you want it to be for four years. Mm-hmm. None of us want it to be a portal thing or like, oh, I'm just going to use this kid for two years. I'm going to recruit over him and look at the portal. Mm-hmm. That's not, I think, how your dad operates or how Lisa and our staff operate. But I think the world is starting to operate like that. Mm-hmm. 
I'm, I've heard people, I was recruiting last weekend and one of my friends said, I'm just going to, I'm going to wait for the portal. I, yeah. I, I really don't like the, the 23s. And if I don't get that kid, I'm just going to wait for the portal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to wait for the portal. <laughs> right. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like a, it's a weird thing, but I, I think that's where we're headed. It's like free agency. Right? A lot of people are like building their rosters. Like yeah. Absolutely. The and Absolutely. Like, and like tampering is at an all time high. Yeah. Like oh. it's so bad. Like mm. so bad. Yeah. Oh, easy. Just, Cause like everybody just goes through the AU coach or whatever. Like there's so many avenues that like other coaches like oh. can like check a box course. See this kid didn't play. And then they call the AU coach like, Oh, Hey, like yeah. he, he'd play here. Like whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then the, then the, a, then and the kid wants to hear anything about how yep. he would play. How about somebody wants him. Yes. Oh, and then okay. also the AU coach calls the kid. Oh, they want you. Oh, well I'll be in the portal tomorrow. And right. then there's you know, no sweat. Now, especially with the one-time transfer, you just yep. do it and no, no, you go, you don't no sit. problem. Yeah, that the AAU guys, have, that power is now really, we've worked for a while to kind of lessen mm-hmm. that influence. And now with this one-time transfer, boy, they got a lot of power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of power. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. Well, earlier, let, let's get into, uh, let's get into some, uh, some of your game. Um, you, you know, you mentioned Drake earlier, yeah. but we want to, we want to go back to, High school. What, what was the number you said? A uh, bajillion points. Yeah, roughly, <laughs> roughly, give uh, or take. It was. There was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot. I a lot never met points. a shot I didn't like. Yeah, but Me that neither. was my role. <laughs> I mean, we we're all what well, we have in common. We all live offense right yeah, here yeah. around this table. Absolutely. Offense. Absolutely. Enough defense to be good, yeah. but offense is just so fun. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So talk but, to us a little bit about well the the, the six on six game. That, yeah. What's so fun? Like a lot of my players. They don't really understand it, but they were called forwards and guards. Mm-hmm. But it was the forwards were shooters and the guards were always defenders. Okay. And okay. so they never crossed half court. So it was two games of three on three. Mm-hmm. And then you had, um, if the shot was made, the ref would grab it out of the rim and throw it up to his partner. And then they'd give it to the offense on the other side. If the shot was missed, then the defenders, they would dribble to half court, but they only got two dribbles. And they they throw it to the other side, but you you couldn't cross half court if you were a defender or you were an offense at, for a half. All right, so it's three little games of or two little games of three on three, and so it made for a fast paced game because two dribbles. If you made it, then they they'd whip it up to the other side. Right, and so there was a lot of scoring in that six on six, and then you can imagine if you were an offensive player, that's all you did. Right, so the efficiency could be really high if you were one of the scorers or offense. Mm-hmm. But the amazing thing was when you go to a camp. You know how they go to camp when you're little, like raise your hand if you want to be a point guard, right? People raise their hand. Raise your hand if you want to be a post player. Raise your hand if you want to be a wing. Everybody's, you know, but you raise your hand if you want to be a forward, which was offense. Half of the gym. Raise your hand if you want to be a guard, which was a defender. About half the gym. So interesting. It was just yeah. weird. It was like yeah. kids that maybe they didn't shoot really well, but they could defend. It was all that they knew. So you just went into playing it, and then I just happened to come along at the right time. I mm-hmm. mean, I was in kind of the golden era of this six-on-six, six, and I had a great coach that was really good offense, three-on-three. Because three. you think of the three-on-three three you played, right? Yeah, I did. It wasn't quite that fun or that fast, mm-hmm. but, you know, it was a pretty cool game, right? Scoring, scoring. So much space. Yeah. It just makes it so all much easier. <laughs> so it was kind of – not nearly as good as what you played, but the concept. Mm -hmm. And I just had a knack for scoring. Mm -hmm. And so then it was like a perfect storm for me. And um, I ended up scoring a lot of points, got recruited. But the state of Iowa was one of the last to shift and leave that game. But the reason it did that is it was a really major moneymaker. The CEO, if you will, of the Girls Athletic Union – his name was Wayne Cooley. So he, way back in the 50s, he came up with this concept that we're going to make this a major event in Des Moines. And he marketed it uh, like a entertainment around it. Dancers, halftime performers. I mean, think of the NBA now, right? Mm-hmm. Or anything, you know, in our games. Mm-hmm. He was doing that in the 50s to sell a ticket. And then the girls were scoring. So the... In the glory days of six on six in Des Moines, you couldn't get a ticket for the final. It would be 10, 12,000 people sold out to watch a girls' high school game. And so 
they were making money and we really outdrew the boys a lot of times, the state, the state for many, many years. Then what happened, um, some girls who had, a, they got relegated to the defensive side Well, they wanted to play offense. Then they had, they've threatened a lawsuit because they were not, you know, getting the opportunities to be mm-hmm. recruited and so forth. And it, it was time to shift too. Mm-hmm. But that was the one thing that all of a sudden it was like, okay, we, we can't fight that. They have a point. And then they shifted over in 1993. Well, that like that, that was my question then mm-hmm. is how, cause Iowa took so long to adapt. Well, the college game was not that. Mm, so no. for a defender, for a right. guard, yep. how can you, how are you ever going to get recruited? Yep. You, you never played never offense. Very. And the only ones that did were really tall. There were def- like, if you were a six foot two, mm-hmm. like defender, then there'd be a school that, it, but it would very rarely be like a, anybody that wasn't in Nebraska or Iowa or a state that touched us that understood right. it. I mean, if you never had stats for offense, who's going to recruit that? Right. But like Creighton university, they had a, they would recruit a lot of defensive players that were head height, but they understood what the game was and they thought, well, we could develop a kid, right? Kind of mm-hmm. what we make decisions if we're going to go a Juco route or maybe kid that's not scoring a lot, but I'm making a decision. Well, she doesn't touch it. I think I can develop her. Mm-hmm. Well, the people who knew the state of Iowa, well, she doesn't touch it because she doesn't play right. that position. Let, let me get her to my summer camp and let's see if she can six foot two. Let's see if she can do a mic in. Right. Let's. And so if she kind of passed that test, but the guards that were defenders that were fives, eight, never, never, no which one's is crazy them. because there's yeah. probably a lot of good players yeah. who yeah. got passed up yeah. on in that. Right. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's eventually the, the impetus and uh, right. that switched it. And then it wasn't really great basketball for a while. Um, and, you know, there's not, uh, I mean, there's a lot of not good basketball, boys and girls, sometimes oh, rural countries or uh, in cities. There's, you know, to get to where you guys are and to get to where our players are, you know, that's the cream of the crop. But um, it, it was a grand old game that, had so much history, but it was, it was time, but I, I'm, I had a blast playing it. It was fun to play in front of thousands. Uh, our high school gyms were, our high school gyms were much full than city and Liberty and uh, West are to mm-hmm. this day. Most, I mean, most games I go to, I mean, they're, they're, oh, yeah. they were fuller than what most of the time you guys even played in we, front of at West. Oh, we, had horrible cr- yeah. we had horrible crowds. At and West. it just Terrible. was, and our, our boys were pretty supportive too, but our girls were rocking. Support. Wait, where, where are you from? Western side, a class one, a school. Oh, okay. It was, um, Elkhorn Kimbleton, but it's now consolidated, but it's kind of by Harlan Atlantic. It's on your way to Omaha. Okay. Gotcha. But it was, it was fun. It was yeah. Yeah, it was I one one of my nights was 104 points, which is a lot, right, to score. <laughs> so you had to have that pace was going. That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it was quite but, a bit. Well, I remember I was I didn't know where I was. We were up by like, because everybody always said, did anybody score? When I scored that many, it was like the score was like 130 to like you know 100, right? Because you're scoring so fast. Mm-hmm. But I came. We were up by a lot, so uh, I came out of the game ready to sit. It was like two minutes left. Well, then my coach realized I had 98 points. Yeah, so he, back, but yeah. he doesn't tell me, he says, you're going back in. I'm like, I'm not going back in. Cause we're like, there's two minutes left and we're up like 28. Yeah. He's like, you can score a hundred. You need to go back in. I don't remember much about high school, but I remembered that. Cause I didn't like yeah. to be like kind of. And so I went in and I proceeded to miss the rim by two feet. Wow. Like it was so <laughs> like, and I would been so efficient, but it was like, I was Till I finally, finally got it in, you and then got the it. crowd was kind of, you know, they had been tipped off. What happened? Right. That so, was like yeah. Luca, Luca when he we had the cl- free throw yeah. <laughs> to break the record. Yes. Oh, he yeah. airballed it. I, I know. Remember. It's just yeah. like a weird. I remember that. I kind of related to it. Yeah. But anyway, I I've been so blessed. I've kind of been the right place, right time, right coaches, and just really have had a, a blast with this game. What and position were you? I was a, a power forward, okay. but now I should be, you know, the game, a small forward at least. Mm-hmm. But right. I, I was able to, I had a pretty quick release and I played um, the block area okay. at a nice up and under, yeah. kind of the crossover that you'd see our post do. Yeah. And I was very efficient at the elbow in gotcha. there. But um, now I would never have lasted 
ever. What was what was the adjustment period for you going to college on the defensive side then? Well, it, that was a lot because um, I did play club ball because that helped me get recruited. I scored a ton of points. I think I averaged 66 or whatever in high school. So you got the attention of the nation, right? Because right. it's like this kid. I mean, I know they play a weird style, but she's scoring. Right. But then I played summer and we, we did well. We had an all-star game and we would go beat some pretty good teams this mm-hmm. one summer. So I helped me get on the map. But still, the rule in high school, this is where it was really weird. In high school, the three-on-three game, if you're offense, if you were in the lane, right, and made a move, the guard could, you know, try to block it or steal it, tie it up. But if I was outside the lane, the ball was considered a part of my hand. And if they cleanly slapped the ball, that was a foul, so it was not, you could not be physical, right? It yeah. was like, it, it doesn't, it sounds really dainty now, but it's just kind of the way it was. Like if I'm outside the paint, let's say I catch it at the wing, the guard defending me was just, you know, she knew she couldn't be, there's no hand checking. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't even slapping the ball. She was just so worried if I was going to drive, she was working on position to cut me off, mm-hmm. but they could never slap it. Right. So for most of my life, you know, I just square up with kind of a laissez-faire, you know, squaring yeah. up, looking, am I going to drive? That was the hardest Yeah, with trying to defend. Interesting, yeah. Because I remember the first time I was just kind of squaring up and I got slapped and they run down to the other end. They stole the ball and score it. I remember that vividly because my coach is screaming like, you better you know, freaking be aggressive, square up. Yeah. It ain't high school. And I was like, oh, no crap, it's yeah. not high school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then defense, <laughs> um, that took me. That took me to my sophomore year. Yeah. It was my scoring that saved me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what my defense. I got in trouble a lot for my defense but I scored so <laughs> so it was fine yeah it was fine but anyway it was it was uh, you're sweet to ask of the good old days glory days older oh, yeah. I get the better I was yeah. it's kind of how it is as it, as it should be as it should as it be, should be. Yeah. we were I mean we were talking about on the way over we were like wow we need to like ask and get some yeah get I, some I wish you know now you know how we f- I film my kids doing everything on the phone right I don't my mom and dad like there just is no real footage i mean we had some videos um but my mom's passed away and my her aunt this is this kind of a sad sentimental story not that it matters but she had all my memorabilia Mm -hmm. and my aunt was going to help her just kind of organize it probably put the vhs's this is years ago right and all my clippings because you know as a kid you're just not caring but my aunt passed away of cancer when i was in college right so my high school stuff and then um the house that her daughter then inherited, it had a fire. So all the stuff went up. So a lot of the things that they'd saved, uh, and which is totally fine, but I kind of wish I had some uh, footage just to show my kids and even our players. But I I mean, it doesn't have to be a me. There's definitely a footage. But from like my Jack, um, Mm, I would like him just to see it because he just thinks thinks it's so weird, right? (laughs) So I don't have a lot of memorabilia, but... um, you have to see the right game, though. Because yeah. if you see the right game that goes fast, it's kind of fun. But there was a lot of, you know, six on six that wouldn't be 130 to 100, right? right? It'd be a little slow. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so you, what year did you go to Drake? I went 87, graduated in 91. Okay. And then I, I was really fortunate. Lisa coached me, Bluter, my senior year, right. and her yep. system was so fun. It, you know, it's kind of like it is now. We like to go and score. Yeah. And she lets a scorer score. So then I led the nation in scoring, which got me an agent. So I got to go over to Germany and play. And cool. then I just yeah. had a dream ending because our team won the German Cup. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, very rarely do you get to end the season on a win. Right. So I thought, bam, mic drop. You know, I'm just going to go back at my master's and I was thought I'd be like a college president of a small liberal arts college. Mm -hmm. I had a mentor that was a VP of student affairs and he was really pushing me down that route. Well, then when I got back from Europe, I was going to be a GA and then Lisa had a late departure Mm -hmm. of a full-time coach. And then it was kind of like, you know, didn't like some of the people that were applying and she's believed in me. And so she gave me the full-time job. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't make it much, but I got to do that. Right. So that loyalty, um, started way back then. And I saw how she was in the locker room. You know, the coach I had before liked her, but, um, Lisa's style was fantastic. And I just really, her value set has always matched mine. And that's, 
kind of why she hasn't been able to get rid of me, right? And like a bad penny. She's probably like, do you want to take that job? And I keep coming back. So. Right. right. <laughs> well, we're going to really quick take a break for some ads. But All right. We're, uh, we're going to get back into Coach Bluter and right. some other positions after this. Sounds good. Summit Bar and Grill has the best DJs in Iowa City. They routinely bring in DJs from all over the U.S. and Europe, and we have one of their very own working with us here at the pod. Shout out Marco. Shout out, and he's the man. He's the man. <laughs> um, this is definitely the place to be after a big win. Um, definitely going to catch some of us there. Summit, they also just dropped a new food menu. They serve food Tuesday through Saturday starting at noon. The homemade fried chicken sandwich is out of this world. But again, just want to emphasize... It is a great place to go after big wins and mainly to do with the DJ, Marcos, our guy here, but also a lot to do with our guy, Brad. He takes care of us, so shout out to him. Thank you to him. With the college basketball season now officially over, this is the time people turn their attention to filing taxes. People always have a lot of questions about their taxes. Maybe you're wondering if there's anything you can do to owe less taxes. Maybe you've got a little extra cash, you want to put it away for retirement, but you're not sure how. Maybe you're a student athlete with some NIL money and you want to be smart with what you have after paying taxes. Wait, we have to pay taxes? <laughs> Everyone is looking for someone they can trust to provide answers and a game plan to help them make the right decisions with their money for today and in the future. So if you just want to know if you're on the right path or if you haven't even started down a path at all, reach out to an advisor at Lane Family Wealth Management. They offer free phone, online, and in-person consultations. Call 319-535-4525 in Eastern Iowa or 515-322-7971 anywhere else in the U.S. Hey, Connor, I went into Kimball and Beecher Family Dentistry the other day for a cleaning. Was your experience as good as mine? Yes, it definitely was. We... I went in it immediately they they got me in i was i was in and out within 30 30 minutes tops it was pain free the doctors were great the dentists were great um I, I had a lot of fun absolutely they told me i had great teeth and everybody was super helpful so shout out to kimball and beecher family dentistry yeah they told me i had great teeth as well so maybe it was just the thing uh, maybe, I they, think, were I think maybe I, they were lying to i us. think i have better teeth but anyway okay. well, <laughs> they, it was a great experience either way yeah. so thank you to them kimball and beecher I was gonna ask if you had like ever like heard of my mom then like playing if you because she was ninety two from Notre Dame, you were ninety one from Drake. Right, because she she graduated right different. in ninety two. Yeah, she graduated yeah. ninety two. And it was like that's what I don't like about our era, is now you kind of know, right. but no one was covering it until like you right. knew that the Notre Dames were this or whatever. But you know. No one was, you were kind of in your silo trying to mm -hmm. win your conference. And they didn't, um, it, it was the NCAA, they didn't glorify as much as they should have for women. Mm -hmm. And you kind of had to be, you know, the winner of that. And so you didn't know really anything until they put the championship games on TV. Mm -hmm. Right. And so had your mom played in the championship, I'd have been, oh man, you know, yeah, yeah right. that's Fran's wife. But I knew as I got older and then when you guys got hired, then I started to kind of study the history of our game. Right. But right. Interesting. that's where it, that's where now it's so great. Like, you know, the power of social media, but even before that, we just, there was a little more coverage and that you'd know what the PAC 12 was doing and the, but back then, I mean, that's part of the reason why I went to Drake, like, um, they were in the lead eight. Iowa wasn't, mm -hmm. Iowa state wasn't, but they were beating all those people, but it didn't have the power five yet. Right. Football was King, but there wasn't the money right. of the big 10 networks or ABC ESPN was obviously not a thing. So it was just good coaching recruiting. And there was no allure of, well, you should go to Iowa. I mean, yes, you know, there was, but not like there is now. Mm -hmm. Now you, you, a kid should still go to where the fit is. I mean, like sometimes I think kids who should probably go to, you know, a small D2, they really want to go D1. So they'll, you know, take a D1 half a country away. You know, like let's say a kid's from Ohio and he goes to Grand Canyon State. Good school, right? They make the NCAAs, but it's still not the fit. He could really, that, that D2 it just, but I think that allure of D1 sometimes uh, can kind of make people not realize where they're going to be happiest. Mm -hmm. And then I think you take that into now. 
I want to play fire, power five. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to go. And then they go and they end up in the portal, right? right? And so back then, there was none of that. It was just like if a coach could recruit you and sounded like you could play and you didn't have to worry like, oh, is she power five or whatever. And then the Drakes were beating the bigs. Right. But then why we came over here, it started to become harder right. to recruit them because it just was growing. You could feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If Okay, I want to ask you this now after mm-hmm. hearing you say that. Um, when you, like let's say dead and coach here, where would you have wanted to go and what would it have taken for you to, to stay Connor. there? If, you know, because we're, we're saying like, oh, you're from mm-hmm. wherever you chose to go here because power five. So what, what school would that have been for you? And mm-hmm. then what would have kept you out of the portal? Duke. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I okay. wanted to go to Duke. Okay. Duke. That was, that but was like see. the only school that I would have like listened to. Yeah. Like, oh no, no, no. I'm not saying, I'm saying like, no, take, take dead, like completely out of it. No, no, no. But I'm saying I, I would have went to Duke. Okay. Yeah. I get right. that. Yeah. yeah. And give me to keep, like, I mean, got to, I feel like a relationship with the coaches is, yeah. is huge. Like, mm-hmm. right. Like I got to, cause if I never talk to the coaches, if I never, I don't know, it's mm-hmm. just like, I feel like that's weird. Like, I talk mm-hmm. to our coaches all the time. Right. Just texting Courtney, like right before I came here. Yeah. I told yeah. him he should grow his beard back, and he <laughs> said, that, "And he said I'm going to keep growing mine." <laughs> so, no, but it's like so. I would say a lot of it comes down to relationship with the coaches. Like I have to trust like their plan. Like for me as a player, like I like basically they got to show love, right? Like if they yeah. like if the love stopped, mm-hmm. then it's like, do they not want me? Do they mm-hmm. not whatever? So mm-hmm. it comes down to my relationship with the coaches. I would say first and foremost, that's where like if I were to. If I were to actually have been recruited, that's what would have been important to me. Like level, obviously, is important. Like I would have went to Duke, but right. yeah. uh, like the, the relationships, and then like, mm-hmm. like to my teammates, and then also what. And I think a lot of people overlook this. Like, who do they have in my position? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like who do they like? Nobody like they just take their biggest offer or whatever. Yeah. They don't look at the roster. Right. It's like who do they have in my position? Like who like who else is in my class? Like who else right. are they recruiting? Like all that, like I feel like you need to look deeper into all that kind of stuff too. So that's, I would have been pretty thorough in that sense. So just relationship with the coaches, yeah. the roster, and then also like, I mean, I want to be close to my family, but like that's not like a make or break yeah. situation. Okay. Like yeah. it would have been no, nice, but wouldn't have been the end of the world. Yeah. I was just curious because yeah. we've been talking kind of yeah. a lot about that. Kind of interesting. Learn yeah. something new about your bro. Learn something new. Yeah. No, I would have wanted, I wanted to go to Duke. Duke. I we like we played uh, in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Yeah. So my son, Jack, after walking around that campus, he said, I think I could go to Duke. You could go to Duke. <laughs> said, you yeah, I think go. a lot of people think I, that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad. if. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. He, he's on the right track. Yeah, he one. was. Yeah, he's he on was. the right track. Um, okay, let's get to, let's get into some Iowa stuff yeah. uh, now. Earlier you said, and we can cut this if you don't want to yeah. talk about it. Um, but you said, you know, it's coach Bluter has kind of kept you around. Yeah. You're definitely kind of a known yeah. associate head coach. Yeah. Now you kind of alluded to some opportunities that you yeah. may or may not have had. What has, what has kept you here? And are there any notables that yeah. you would want to mention? Well, I think, um, if you're a long time assistant, like you're kind of hot for your, like if you're good, then yeah. about three to five years as you're good, then mm-hmm. you get a lot of calls. You don't have to call people. Right. But then if you don't really like start like taking some or whatever, then, then you have to probably work a little harder. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when we had some good success here, um, then I had a lot of calls. And I'm not saying I would have got them. Um, I interviewed, I flew out to Xavier early. That was one of the early ones. Now I wouldn't have taken Xavier. Mm-hmm. Um, they hired Kevin McGuff, who's really good. Yeah. He's at Ohio, Ohio State, State now, Ohio State. Yeah. but it was just good experience. Cause I had, that was way out of my normal wheelhouse. Right. So I would take like some of those, did a lot of phone interviews, but my whole family's from Iowa. Um, my spouse's family's all from Iowa. And I, I mean, I really love Iowa City and mm-hmm. I love the Big Ten. So it like like some people are just wired. They, you know, want to be a head coach like your dad, he, his steps. Right. He's been so good everywhere. Mm. I mean, I learned last night from Courtney, actually, at our iClub um, winning. He's won a, a championship right at all. Every stop. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's not very Lehigh many people that can say that. Yeah. He's taken like, so it's Lehigh, UNCG, Siena here all to the NCAA tournament. I know. Yeah. I mean, that's World awesome. Yeah. I mean, that just is unheard of. But he, you know, he knew he's taken this step and so forth. He was wired for that. So then some of the opportunities I had, like, I just didn't want to maybe move to a Terre Haute, Indiana. Nothing against Terre Haute. It's like, I didn't want to move all my, yeah. all my people away from all my people just to do that. Yeah. And then when we had kids, then I just think raising them here is so great. And then you kind of get in, you know, now it's like, ah, everything is just black and gold in my mind. It's just like, even if you get the fat contract is like, do I really want to uproot it? And then I think um, you just understand, like, you you try to be really good at your role. And I've never been really wired monetarily. And I'm also very much wired to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel any less of our championships these this year because I wasn't the head coach. Oh, I mean, you, I'm so happy have. that yeah. it's, you know, Lisa's got 800 wins and, you know, I know I'm part of it. So I think it's a perfect combination of – you know, what, how I'm wired, how Lisa leads. And she gives a lot of responsibility. If, you know, you were just typically had to just, you know, clean the floors and be a yes person. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been so fun over all the years. Right. Exactly. But I think your dad's a good leader. Um, people who can retain coaches for that long. I mean, everybody feels vested. And I really believe in that. Like I think all of society, when people feel vested, man, there's a lot you can accomplish. And so part of it was like how to, the long and short of it, I'm an Iowa gal, right? Mm -hmm. Grew up here. My family, my mom and dad were here and my mom wasn't doing great in her health. She passed away a few years ago. So moving away from that, it just wasn't the right time, but I don't think I was wired. And then when I had kids, this is where I wanted to raise them. Mm -hmm. uh, my, you know, Julie and I wanted to raise them. So yeah. um, it just, kind of happened and I, I love it. I mean, I'm, yeah. uh, I, I love everything about Iowa city, our athletic department. We have such great people leading. I mean, just fun. We're right beside your dad and how he does things with yeah. the highest <laughs> level of integrity. Um, Kirk staff. I mean, everybody's kind of wired similarly here mm -hmm. and you can be really proud of every team, how we've succeeded because people are really doing it the right way. Right. And not every place can say that. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know? Yeah, hundred percent. Very much. Yeah, you're kind so, of stuck here now. Though, I, yeah, I am. I'm like. stuck here, but I, stuck. I, hey, we're winning. It's the worst places to be stuck. Oh, right? absolutely. Right. I mean, you guys won the regular season in yeah. Big Ten tournament. Yeah. So you that was a heck of a two weeks. Oh, man. I bet that was the whole insane. career. That was just man. That that was fun. Let's get and into then, it. Let's get into that. Yeah, let's talk yeah. about it. Let's talk about that. It was so fun. I mean, well, for us getting to clinch at home, par partial oh. or ha uh, share the regular season. Yep. I mean, a sellout crowd. I mean, I can't give enough shout outs to our community, how much they support you guys and us. But for women to have three back to back sellouts, mm -hmm. that's so rare. And I mean, that's a testament to our young women. I mean, obviously, Caitlin Clark, Monica Sonano were the key cogs to that wheel. But it took everybody else to allow them to shine and doing their jobs. Mm -hmm. But the team, when we're just like you guys, when you're hitting it right, fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And people like to watch good basketball. Right. And then for us, for women to be able to sell it out, you know, our star is so unique. You know, right. she just is able to do things that you haven't seen people do. Right. I mean, the, the logo shots are a very real thing, right? And, um, you know, some of my friends are like, you know, how do you let her kind of take those? I said, well, if you watch her in practice, she can hit them. And I just said, you know, hey, Caitlin gets heat checks before she starts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that yeah. that's how she is. Yeah. You've got to just let her, you kind of got to let her feel it out. And she's maturing in knowing, like, you know, when she was younger, she would just heat check, heat check, yeah. shoot 16 of them. I'm going to make this thing. Now... She's backing off. I'm like, okay, I, I'm not feeling it right now. So let me shoot a little toe up or let me penetrate. Mm -hmm. Let me, you know, dish it. So it's kind of been a work in progress. But the fact that she can do that with such ease is fun. It's uh, exceptional to watch. I mean, you guys, when you're watching, what's she going to do, you know? Oh, yeah. And that's what it's crowds so are watch. watching, it's right? So fun to watch. Absolutely. And so the challenge for us is working with, in her strengths, but bringing everybody else along. And at the end of the year, 
we really hit that balance mm-hmm. when we clinched at home and then had the fun run in the Big Ten tournament. And then you guys had the next, we had three weeks of yeah. like just uh, championships. You know, <laughs> oh, it was so fun. So fun. No, Caitlin, it's like if she makes, if she makes one. Uh-huh. I'm like, I'll, I'll turn to whoever I'm sitting with. I'm like, yeah. she's going to shoot the next one from 40 yeah. feet. She's I was like, right. she, she, it's like she's going to shoot it from half court. She yeah. makes one, and in her mind, she's hot. Yeah, yeah she is. <laughs> yes, hot. there's a little bit of that. Uh, there's a, a lot of that. Uh, but, no, I mean, I think that's the – I think the way Lisa coaches, um, it's a fun system to play, and I think mm-hmm. Caitlin picked the right system. Because mm-hmm. some people would have really curtailed her. And we've had to learn, too. I mean, we've – we have these very real conversations. I mean, you're going to go into coaching is like, you know, you watch it afterwards and like, uh, we let that go too much or, you know, this, but also, uh, you know, part of what makes us great is that fluidity when we're great, not always is that freedom. Mm -hmm. And they all have that. And I think a shooter, man, you, you can't put too many rules on it or they won't be good. Yeah. You know, like, Right. Steph Curry, I mean, they're not going to tell him that was a terrible shot. Right. Not too often, I would assume, right? No. no. Um, Caitlin hears it's a terrible shot, but she's got that mentality, and you can only be great if you are that confident. Mm-hmm. So we can't squash that. And so it's it's a delicate balance sometimes. Yeah. She, Absolutely. and like you said, I think she's maturing too. Like she is. She, yeah. I've talked to her. Like she's like, okay, like. Yeah, I can't. I can't have any more ten turnover games. Right? No, exactly. And we're like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. no, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> you can have. You're never yeah. going to be a zero one two turnover. Right. Your usage rate is too high. You have right. the ball too much. But right. like, eliminate the double right. digit one. And she's like, yeah, no, I like, I know. Like, it's she, she just like she sometimes knows. she just is like she can't. You tell her don't take that last cookie in the jar. She just can't help herself. Right. You know, she <laughs> thinks she's going to make this pass between you know, seven defenders. Yeah. There's only five on the floor. Right. Yeah. But she's just gonna, <laughs> she loves the, you know, the amazing. Yeah. I'm like, can you just be fine with just decent? Yeah. Make, just make a decent pass for a simple assist. Right. But sometimes she <laughs> wants to hit that one from inline to inline. Right. Yeah. And that's where I think the, the growth is, is coming. And, uh, and she's, I mean, that's the beauty of what we do as coaches is yeah. it's a four year or maybe five, you know, process. And it doesn't always, you can't get there always just in that first year, you know, right. but I've, I've, we've been really proud of her growth and, and the team. I think they've really done a great job of, you know, working with her and she working with them. And I'm, and we're really hopeful for really big things this year. Oh yeah. You know, big time. No, I'm yeah. gonna be at every game. I was. At, I mean, I've been at every game. I know, Always you guys. At the game. Well, yeah. it's so fun. I love yeah. our like you guys. Um, I think we just support each other, and it's not like that everywhere. No, it's I mean, not. we live it with each other. Yeah. You know, when you guys have a tough loss, it's like everybody's like, God. When you win, we're like, yes. And I feel that's really a real thing with mm-hmm. our programs, and it's mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Genuinely. It's so awesome. Yeah. Oh, it is. I mean, we go to your guys' games and go nuts. <laughs> I know. And we know. We see you. And we love it. And, over then, and then you guys do the same thing, yeah. especially over covid where there was nobody yes. in the stands yeah. and thankfully we used to, yeah we used to <laughs> scream at people i know i needed those games like i needed something I another know. game other than ours something oh, to tell, like, like a sporting see, event like watch totally yeah. yeah that was a weird time in life wasn't oh, it gosh it was crazy and the can now noise and music when they would try to fake a crowd right. oh, <gasps> was like, oh that was tough <laughs> That's awful. someone asked me the other day what was the hardest thing I go, there was a lot. I said, but the canned music was just <laughs> awful. That oh, it was terrible. Tinny. Yeah, I hated it. No. Playing it was on Christmas was, was the worst. Oh, yeah, when was, you guys had it. Well, <laughs> Christmas Eve, oh, we were in the hotel. Right if we won. If, we yeah, that was, it just salt, that was, was injury on that one. Yeah, yeah. Salt if we had injury. one, you know, let, let, I don't want to talk about that. I but know. let's go. <laughs> we have a couple more questions. Um, the secret to your your tutelage, your workouts, you know, you, you've created all <laughs> Americans. You're, it is, yeah, it is unreal. What. Like at this point, it's almost like, Hey, you're a big girl. Come to yeah. Iowa. You're going to be yeah, an all American. I wish, I wish it was that easy. What is, all big girls. Do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> please blast this everywhere. Blast please. it out. We'll clip it. But what is, what is the secret? Is it, is it confidence that you instill in them? Is it a specific workout? And yeah. you don't want to give it away. You know, we yeah. can, we no. don't want to give it away. To, I tell you, to I wish, coaches. I wish I had this really amazing, nugget that's like oh my gosh let's patent it or let's right. give me all the credit in the world right but i mean number one if you get you get yourself a megan mm-hmm. or you get yourself a monica you make you look pretty good right yeah. your dad will say the same thing I mean, you guys you get kids that are 
you know, pretty good to start out with. And that's what we've been blessed. We've gotten a lot of great kids. Um, but I think, I do think it is that like mm -hmm. you, we bring them in and we use them. So if you're used, yeah. then you work a little harder. Cause I know I'm not just a rebounder. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm just old school. If there's a, a, a little secret or not a secret or what my philosophy is, I'm just old school. Um, I'm, I, I, I keep it simple and it's not very sexy. And so if you want to do like a, you know, a fake here, a dribble and a, you know, pro move, or you want to work on a, a Euro step from the elbow and look really good with the finger roll as opposed that, that ain't me. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to do that. We have guards that can do that. You're going to be very efficient and we're going to be money and we're going to do it so much that you're going to shut your eyes at night and you're going to be able to, to see it. Right. And so you won't like it then, but when you are playing in front of thousands and you're cutting down a net, then it's going to be really fun. Be nice. And I think that we've, we've convinced them, but you have to be the, you have to really believe in that. You got to be with me in it. And I think the ones that are with me in it and can get excited about the redundancy. And then we have some footwork things that we'll, we'll teach, but I, I don't, I get way too much credit. Honest to goodness. Uh, I have not scored a point since 1991 to be clear. <laughs> and so all this like, Oh, it's like you, I think our system, we utilize them, but I, I just think it was a very nice little, um, you know, compliments that I've gotten, but, um, they do all the work. Yeah, they no, they, it's the, bu it, yeah. they buy in, they do, but mm -hmm. it is, I mean, clearly it's a, it's a recipe for success. Yeah, I as think, well. oh, I think uh, you wanted, like when you're talking about being recruited, being mm -hmm. recruited, like that is my thing too. Like legitimately, like you want to play for a good coach. Like when I talk to the post players, I want to like you, mm -hmm. you know, I want to, I want to see in your eyes. Like when I know that you, you really want to work and we connect and I want them to also want me. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes in this profession, it's like we work so hard and we're, you know, trying to convince them to come to us and not Ohio State, and not Stanford and not, you know, Iowa State or whoever. Is there's a point like, OK, we've chosen you. So I want you to also choose us exactly. and me. You choose me and we're together. We're going to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, a, a connection and when I have that connection, and I, I have had it with a lot of our posts, I just, you know, we just know, right? And it's really, really fun. And I think that is, um, like, I just don't care that someone's 6'4". Mm -hmm. If I talk to them, I'll be like, nope. Yeah. I don't say that to them because they'll probably kick me and have a double-double when they go to another Power yeah. 5. <laughs> but in my mind, I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, might take a, I might take someone that, isn't every all that, but I just that's to me is where I'm maybe a little different. Is I'm I'm a who I choose to ride with. I'm a ride with all all career long, yeah. and I'm not gonna recruit over you. And I'm not gonna. It's you're the one, and I think that's to me that connection is that important. Yeah, and so I I think that might be maybe if there's a little difference is. Once I go, I go. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I yeah. think that that's very, it's why we've seen the, the play that we have yeah. from the players that you yeah. had. And it's why we've seen the dedication, yeah. the loyalty throughout yeah. the programs. It's been, and that's. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to think that. And yeah. they're, but I, I think they are, I mean, I start out with if we connect, they're, they're good yeah. and they're really good kids. I mean, how can yeah. you not love Monica Sanano? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's I mean she hard. just She's is, awesome. and she just <laughs> is so authentic and works her tail off. And, and that's, that's, what's fun. And she shoots know? 70%. Oh my gosh. Can you believe that? Pretty efficient. Know. Now you know Monica. She wants to get in the three point action. I know. Yeah, we, I were, we were talking. We were kind. We could be we, technically considered a catalyst. Oh, you for, could. Okay, for, good for guys. When she came on the pod. We were. <laughs> I, oh yeah, you might have. But it's like so. I'm. I'm. I'm open. I'm open. And what she, I've learned from Megan Gusman. Can we talk about her just one quick second? Yeah, no, I was going to ask about her. Next. You guys, we absolutely yeah. should talk. about Do you about know her. how yeah. you guys would know this? She has changed her game and survived. This is like, she had a, it was great back to the basket, but she's too little. They take a chance. 
not a great fit where she's at Dallas, gets cut. I mean, she's had life lesson, but she's stuck for four years being the end of the roster as a facing forward. Mm-hmm. That That is, in my opinion, the hardest transition to go from a back-to-the-basket kid mm-hmm. to facing, having to shoot threes, having to, def- you know, to – Defend now. You have to as a post anyway. But now she's really guarding threes and fours, right. mm-hmm. having to show, having to flood, different mentality, but having to put it on the floor and having little pull ups. For her to do that is another like chapter in her goat book. Right. And I know she's not a star, and she may not you know make it again next year. But the fact that there's only 144 roster spots yeah. to become the best in the world, and they do recruit the yep. world as does the men's game. Yep. I couldn't be prouder of her. So my point is Monica, I mean, she's been back to the basket. She's not necessarily have her sights set on the league and that's a very, uh, athletic past, but she wants to go overseas. Yeah. And so there need to be more versatile. So I'm changing. I'm going to open my mind and we're going to work on that three. Yeah. So your little uh, tutoring of her or pushing her over the edge. <laughs> you've also, she's come to me. So now we're all in this together now, boys. Yeah. We're so advocates we're gonna- for it. We're, <laughs> I'm in. We were gassing her. We were saying like. She makes a 17 footer. She does. Like it's automatic. Yeah. Like yeah. that little foul line jumper she yeah. shoots never misses. And if she, and if we just back it up a little bit, especially the trail three, a lot of posts get that in our game. Yeah. And I think what's really ticked her off is she got seven three shot on her gets the Nebraska post yeah. because yeah. she she hustled down to the block but she forgot the kid could shoot it so I think yeah. I think she has a little payback on her mind that's all right too she's got a pretty jumper and to, but Megan, her free throws. Megan always had a beautiful looking jumper she too. did like, you know and she started like you said like it was first it was 10 12 15 yeah. footers gradually yep. moving back moving you know, and back, now she's back. just really if you and, guys um if she ever comes back you should I mean she's really changed her body with how she fuels it and how she eats and professional takes She's it. Yeah. And she understands right? that's the yeah. moneymaker literally. Yeah. And it's just really fun to watch how she's, you know, changed now. She's not one of the best in the league facing, but she's good enough to keep that spot. And that's where I, I couldn't be prouder of her. No, I mean the ability to adapt and fit a role mm-hmm. and find her that that's what a pro is. Yes. You know, she's talent. She's obviously, mm-hmm. she had the career of all careers here. Right, but to be able to adapt to the game, find out what they well, okay, I'm not doing, I can't do that anymore. Right, right? I, that's yep. not my game. Yep. But and how the, can I be successful? Yep. In what they need me to do, yep. and that's why, like you said, just another chapter it's, and, in the goat book. And such a great example, like is like to go from that. And Luca's a little bit with his, you know, their ascent to amazingness, mm-hmm. and then you know. It can't be easy to then go, whoo, mm-hmm, like right. Luca did. But Megan went here to cut, right? Yeah. Right. So all of a sudden, all those accolades are gone, and now you're kind of going and thinking, Ugh. but then she got that call back. But then realizing, okay, this is what I love. I used to be the star. Now, how do I stay? I have to learn a new role. And keeping that confidence and that understanding, I mean, that just is a – just – such an adaptive personality Mm -hmm. and that's going to serve her so well in life. Mm -hmm. And she's a business major. I don't know what she'll go into, but the volatility of the markets, right. Or whatever. And just in life, if there's curveball, I'm you, I mean, healthy, 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 all of a sudden, what I have, what Mm -hmm. I got to deal with this. I mean, all of that, um, how we're wired, but Megan, I just think, geez, the lesson she's getting. Right. And then to handle that is like, um, it just, for me as a coach, it's such a great example that I can, I can go to her for an example for Caitlin and I can go to her for an example for a freshman that's not getting in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can use Megan Gustafson yeah. and beautifully and confidently say, look at this and look at that. She's the goat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, um, there's just very few times. Can you do that? Yeah. Because I won't hopefully be able to use Caitlin as the, the end of the bench type of situation, yeah. you know, because Caitlin. That would be weird. It would be, right? <laughs> if she goes to yeah. the league. Now she has to improve her defense. Yeah. I think sometimes she, you know, she knows that. <laughs> but she's she really going to have to 
really do that. And hopefully if she understands that it will even help us more. Mm -hmm. Cause I think sometimes, you know, an offensive kid can be like, well, I can't use too much of my energy in the defensive end. If I got to do this, right. well, we have to find a way to do a little more to help us, you know, win and do better and then prepare her for the league. And I think she will, but I think it's, you know, that league's hard. It, there's, oh. there's a lot of defense. I mean, pros too. I mean, mm -hmm. You're, there you see speed against Michigan, let's say, or Michigan State as a guy, but you go and you uh -oh. make it. I mean, I don't know if you talked to Wheezy, but that's I different. wonder what that's like, like uh -oh. really going against those fast, fast, fast guys. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Everybody, no, it's it's a different level. Yeah. It's like in the WNBA, like first-round picks are getting cut. I know. It's crazy. That's, yeah. that's why they need expansion, right? they Actually, which is what's coming. Yes, I think so, I too. I it. Yes, it, I do think there's a – couple markets that they'll tap into because I think I mean the women certainly deserve it but I mean it's societally and I don't want a product that's just draining and losing money either but I I think as we're seeing more of the people backing the NILs um, but Buick I don't know if you notice those com commercials but mm -hmm. Buick's really put a big initiative um, during the women's and men's um, NCAA tournament yeah. they were celebrating female basketball or sporting moments yeah. and they put a lot of money into marketing women. Yeah. Um, but I think there's more major national companies that are doing that. And if we can get that and we can increasing the market, I think, I think we can have a, I mean, I'm not saying it's ever going to be lucrative like the Boston Celtics brand, but I think we can make something that's going to be more lucrative than certainly uh, no one wants to watch it. We're not going to support it right. type of mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I've seen, I've seen change made, yeah. you know, in, in a pretty short period yeah. of time. And I think Caitlin Page, yeah. you know, when they continue, Absolutely. because that, that's kind of like the new wave now of our generation. And yeah. like you said, kids are seeing them play. Yeah. And I think, I just want to credit you guys. And I think it's a credit to your dad and your mom. Obviously you had a mom that was a D1 player oh, yeah. but I mean your dad from day one has always watched our games you mm -hmm. know I can't say that every men's coach that I've worked with has yeah and so yeah. I just always was so appreciative right because mm -hmm. he appreciated basketball mm -hmm. yeah. and then obviously Margaret plays and understands it but you guys men young men you have respect of your peers and you you want them to succeed mm -hmm. and oh, you yeah. you know game kind of respects game and it's that that mentality that's going to help and change right. it. And, you know, there's enough of the, you know, the men that are, you know, sexualize women or degrade them by getting the kitchen or whatever. We're sadly, we have that, but yeah. I feel like there's more of you mm -hmm. that have actually played and there's more men that are willing to at least respect. And I just want to thank you because you guys, yeah. you're knowledgeable, you know, about expansion at league, you know, national yeah. women's players. And that is just great examples for your teammates, but all your younger guys. And it's just, it really is changing the game. And I, I'm just really appreciative and I'm impressed by you guys, how you conduct yourselves and in all ways. I mean, you were, I mean, social justice causes uh, to, you know, helping women's games, you're great leaders. It's just, you're what's right with, yeah. with the, the world right now. And a lot's wrong. Yeah. So I just want to thank you guys. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. I mean, thank it's, you. and we, and that's what we enjoy, right? Yeah. Like it, it's fun. Like I love, I love going to the women's, like I love yeah. going to your guys' games. It's, it's fun. hard it's not basketball. to, it's hard yeah. not to have like you said, yeah. game respects game. And yeah. too many people try to turn it into like a, like a competition all you the know, time like it's so what, annoying. like when like i remember this year like when when jabo was struggling people are like oh like yeah get let's get caitlin like on the men's it's team so like annoying. He, she's better than J no, we don't need to do that no. like that's not, not about that i hated that, that about my that. whole life i <laughs> like, even when i was a player yeah i was appreciate like appreciate both like why? you can very and easily appreciate your, what's going you're on. like <laughs> you're it's disrespectful both ways mm -hmm. yeah because it's like our game's not enough as girls right? right or girls in high school women now is like will you really be good if you could go to the men's side and show yeah. you know them how to do it exactly well i'm not good now in my game mm -hmm. or right. the, so then a guy who is you know struggling and then it's like oh that girl can be it no it's like respect that i i have always yeah. I, I don't know why it's the weirdest thing yeah and it, agree, and yeah. then it tries to pit us against each other yeah. yeah when we're like oh my gosh i mean we're like we 
love Joe Bo, right? We don't want him to struggle. <laughs> it's like, shut up. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah, I that whole thing. I uh That's why you see like guy like our team and other yeah. men's teams supporting yes. the women's teams. And same with I mean, guys in the league, like yes. the connections that Caitlin has with NBA yeah. players. Right. The NBA players support of the W it's like you said. We know what we know what's going on. We know what it is. Right. And we just got to continue. Yep. Um, on the same path. But with that being said, we don't want to take too much of your yeah. time. Thank you so much. Well, thank for you for having me. Joining yes, us. I'm, I'm very, this very awesome. honored. Fired up. We uh, I mean, we covered about an hour, ten, hour, fifteen, pretty quick. We did. It kind of flew fast. by. It yeah. did. Flew by. It flew bad for us. Hope it does for the listeners. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think it will. I think I've been trying to cut down on time, but I just feel, we have so much to cover. I know. I'm going to well, start having fun. to do part twos. <laughs> with, like, we'll bring you back. Exactly. We'll do a part two. Yeah. How about we all just win the big again, and we'll do this. And we'll later. do it again. Absolutely. That'd be that, great. That, sign me up for that. that yes. Absolutely. <laughs> sign me up. Well, thank you guys. No. And go Hawks. Thank go you so Hawks. much. Right. Go Hawks. That's a wrap. Thank you. And now a message from our friends at Vibrant Credit Union, reminding you that unfortunately you can't stay in college forever, but you can do the next best thing, which is joining Vibrant's professional development program. It's like taking a nine month course in the fundamentals of banking, except instead of shelling out for tuition, you're the one getting paid. You'll also get expert career coaching to help you choose the full-time Vibrant career that's the best fit for your skills and interests. And look, Vibrant Headquarters is no Iowa City, but it is probably the only credit union with a full-sized basketball court, a fitness center, and an employee-only bar. And they're recruiting now. Get all the details at vibrantcreditunion.org slash launch. Diamond Ridge Construction is a family and locally owned and operated company. Diamond Ridge does roofing, siding, and gutters. Diamond Ridge was awarded the best construction and roofing company in Iowa City. They have never received a review lower than five stars. They do quality and efficient work for a customer friendly price. They do work in the Johnson County area, but are open to expanding. If you're interested in seeing some of their work, visit www.diamondridgeiowa.com. Some of those pictures are really cool. They do houses of all sizes and have done some massive complexes. They are open weekdays from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. For a free estimate, call 319-800-7663. Again, that's 319-800-7663. Yo, Kono with the rebound. They got eight seconds to go. Move the ball right up the court. Yeah, you know they ready to roll. Hit the outlet pass to Patrick. Put a move on them so tragic. Yeah, you don't want no static. McCaffrey boys, they be like magic. This shit back to Connor, yeah, you know these boys is hooping. Hit him with the alley, yeah, you know he straight up hooped it. Now Patrick's hanging on the rim, yeah, he's got his feet up. Excessive celebration, McCaffrey boys, they done got teed up. Oh man, they got teed up.